today you see two woven tops that are full of interesting details that you can sew you can work for both summer and winter it just depends on your fabric choice you see a curved half placket a collar cuffs lots of little things that are really fun to sew here's one of them stay with me hi sewing friends i'm karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and in this case it's about woven sewing i really enjoy these two garments i'm about to share they have really nice details to them these are the types of projects that are super satisfying that will allow you to slow down to just relax go step by step and come out with beautiful beautiful garments in the end this pattern is from wardrobe by me and it's called the perfect tunic and although it's called a tunic it can actually be a top as well <laughs> there are many options in this one pattern and there's basically a view A and a view B. Both of these views have things in common. The most important feature is the curved placket on the front and the collar. So you'll see that everywhere, along with the bust start for shaping. And then if you want to make a more simple style, you can make a tunic that is slightly longer. I see it as a longer top. It's not a tunic that will hit the mid thigh, that sort of length. It's just one that will hit the full hip with a straighter hem the back piece is just one piece the sleeve is a little wider a little longer and on the inside you can sew a tab that you use to fold up your sleeve with a little button so that is one way you can make the perfect tunic in a more simplified way because it already has a beautiful feature there of the curved placket and the collar so if that is enough complexity for you then you can make it in that version UB also has the beautiful placket and the collar but with this one you have a yoke at the back the back has a center back pleat and as for the sleeves they are slightly narrower they have a separate cuff they have some pleats there and a bound slit so those are really nice details that I really enjoy sewing all the time. They just elevate any garment that you're making, you know, when you have a sleeve like that. If you are willing to spend a little more time to hone some more skills and make a garment that has a little bit extra, a bit more detail, something nice, then you can sew View B. I've sewn View B. It's the one I always wanted to make because I just love all those details. I was sewing the perfect tunic for Patreon from start to finish in full detail. And whenever I do those monthly sew alongs for Patreon, I try to choose all the features I can so that there's a lot to see in the sew along. So I never usually take a simplified version of a pattern. I try to find one that has the most features. And it just happens to be that I like all these features and I would have wanted to make them anyway. So that's what I've done. For the perfect tunic, you can use a wide variety of fabrics, wovens, as well as knit fabrics. Although I haven't explored that option, it is described in the pattern. So you can choose any of the structured wovens like cotton lawn, cotton voile if you want something really lightweight. I think even a nice quilting cotton can work. A linen, a linen cotton blend. All those types that are a little bit more structured will work perfectly fine with this style because it's not a style that's got anything flowy. There's nothing here that needs to drape. So those fabrics would work perfectly fine. If you want to use fabrics that are a little lighter, a little softer, maybe use a crepe, a rayon, 100% rayon, silk, linen, rayon blends are really nice for something that looks a bit softer and feels a bit softer on. I've chosen two different fabrics. If you hear a rooster, we have a neighbor that has taken up chickens and they have a rooster. So you might hear that every now and then. <laughs> So back to the fabric, I made my muslin with a poly satin fabric that is not too shiny at all. It's quite opaque actually, it's just got a really slight sheen to it, but the print is just amazing. I had a tiny little piece and I made a muslin with that. And for the final version, I chose a crepe fabric that's sort of crinkled. When you press it, it doesn't really press that well, it always looks a little crinkled which makes it look really cool also <laughs> and the print is just amazing as well both of these i look at them and the prints are just you know those emojis where there's a happy face with hearts there on the eyes that's my face when i look at these prints <laughs> you'll see them soon you'll find sizes 0 to 24 us available in this pattern and these patterns are drafted for a taller woman 5 foot 7 5 foot 8 so i always find that works really well for me i, I don't really need to do that many adjustments the fit of the perfect blouse is perfect in my opinion. It's got just the right amount of ease to be comfortable and not be boxy. So at the bust you have about three and a half to four inches of positive ease. At the waist it's more relaxed, about 10 to 11 inches. And then at the hips about four inches of positive ease. So I chose a size 16 and in essence I would have needed to blend to a size 18 just to have enough space in the hips. 
but I didn't want to print two sizes. You can, when you have PDF patterns that have layers, you can click on the sizes that you want to print and then you get two lines on the pattern. But because I know I only needed that at the hips, I really didn't want to have two lines everywhere on the placket areas and all of that. So I just printed a size 16 and on my paper pattern before cutting it out, I just added a quarter of an inch to the side at the hips and that gives me just the extra inch that I needed. So I probably have about a size 17 at the hips, not a full size 18, but that's what I wanted. And I get about three and a half to four inches of positive ease at the hips, which is perfect, exactly what I want. I didn't want anything more than that. Apart from adding that tiny little bit at the hips, I had to make an adjustment to my bust start. When I was mentioning to you that there were two views, A and B, I didn't mention that you'll find all these views on the same pattern pieces. If you are making view A on the front, you have the full piece that goes up to the shoulder. And you have another little line below that you fold away if you're making view B because view B has a yoke. So just extend the full piece and you can draw your seam allowance and take your vertical measurement from here. If you've watched my feeding video for vertical lengths, you know how to do this. <laughs> I'll leave a link down below. And I measured from here down to where my bust height is on the pattern and I needed to lower my bust up by three quarters of an inch. So that is the only adjustment I made to the pattern that I thought I wanted to check with a muslin. I also was able to confirm that my dart correction is okay. I had to drop it by three quarters of an inch. I'm going to perfect this armhole. I'll probably take it in from there a tiny bit, like a quarter of an inch. And I also want to make this a little narrower. So I'll probably put pins around there and just trim this away so it's slightly narrower. Also, I made a muslin because I just wanted to practice this placket. It's really different. The construction method is totally different to other plackets I've sewn. And I really wanted to get it down before filming it for Patreon. So that's why I made two as well. <laughs> Plus I wanted two. In a close and so personal, you'll see an overview of the pattern, some of the preparation work. You'll see the pattern pieces which need to be interfaced. Of course, you'll see a little bit of block fusing, which is my preferred way to interface more pieces. I just think it's easier. It cuts down the work of having to cut interfacing pieces separately, fusing them onto your pieces. And then it also prevents these pieces from shrinking or changing shape when you're doing that process. Block fusing is really, really accurate and you get the exact pieces that you need. And that's really important for me, especially when there's little collars because I really want everything to fit together. And I find that with doing block fusing, I never get those discrepancies where a collar won't fit into the neckline or things like that. I'm focusing today on sharing with you how to sew this curved placket. It's really fun. I'm sure you've never seen anything like it. And I hope you enjoy seeing the process. This is starting to Here are the two main pieces for the body of the tunic or blouse. This is the back, this is the front, they're both cut on the fold. I'm cutting view B which has a center back pleat. There is a view where you don't cut out the pleat and you just have a different cut line on the pattern. This one is missing the top part because there's going to be a yoke there. When I was cutting out I marked where this box pleat is going to go and I put a few pins there immediately and drew a line so I can just base that easily with a long stitch length and forget about it. The front is cut on the fold up to a certain point and then there's a little corner that you cut into and then the neckline goes curved. Okay, so you can see that the fold reached up to there and then there was a little bit that you cut into the fabric and then you start curving out like that and that gives you the opening for this half placket. I have stabilized it with some interfacing. I just cut a narrow strip of 3 8 put some across like that, put some up there down there. It is a pretty flimsy fabric and I thought this was going to help. I am going to stay stitch this area right there as soon as possible also. Around the middle here of the neckline you have a little notch and you have a little notch there. Those are there to help you align the placket pieces in a little bit. We also have a yoke piece that is cut twice. This is going to be all enclosed with a burrito method so I have two pieces there. There and there you have other notches that will match the shoulder seams for putting on the collar as well. <clears throat> the shoulders are right there because the yoke will go forward on your body a little bit like an inch forward. And now these placket pieces, this can get a little bit confusing so I'm going to explain it to you and if you do it like I am doing it, 
it's going to be much, much easier. So I have these two placket pieces. I have interfaced a piece already. You can see the other side already has the interfacing on. And you need to cut one of each. Right placket, and this one says placket and right placket facing. So you need to cut one of each with the fabric right sides up. You can see my print is right there. Also the printing of the pattern piece, everything is right sides up. Cut one of each. Just like that. Then you would do your notch markings on the wrong side of the fabric, but you are cutting it with the right sides up. After you've cut this, one of each, you need to take this smaller piece, it's number five, this one, and cut two of them mirrored. And that's why I have this other small piece of fabric already interfaced. I've just folded it so I can cut it in one go, making sure that they're mirrored. When you cut two pieces, one on top of each other like this, you are always going to get mirrored pieces. This is how this cutting phase can be simplified, made easier, shorter time. Now, if you want to cut your interfacing pieces separately, you can of course do that and then fuse it onto your pieces. All these pieces are going to be smaller than your actual pieces. But because I like to block fuse, all this other method I'm not going to use. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut my pieces now. We are at the sewing machine and I have my two placket pieces. The ones I cut together mirrored the smaller piece, number five. It's already interfaced, but I'd marked some red notches there. The blue one is higher, but the red notch is sort of in the middle right there. You can see this sort of looks like a bracket. It needs to have this curve. This is how you're meant to look at this. On the top, you have these short little ends like that. At the bottom it's more flat. So these are the edges where I'm going to do a guide stitch 3 8 of an inch because I really want that to be precise so I can fold this in and have it ready. These will be like the facings of the placket, these will be on the inside. I have a 4.5 stitch length, it will be easy to remove later. There we go, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the ironing board and press this in nice and neatly. I'll be back. That's how they look, pressed in by 3 8 It's so, so neat and you can never go wrong with a guide stitch. It makes a huge difference in my opinion, especially for plackets and collars and things like that. You know, I'll be happy to eyeball 3 8 in other aspects of sewing, but not for plackets. And you can take this off so easily now. It's already served its purpose. This is the front piece open. This is what it looks like right there and then it curves out. I've already shown you and I had interfaced this edge to stabilize it and I'm going to now stay stitch this part of the neckline before I go on to do anything else so I can prevent it from stretching. Super important because it's going to be a collar there later. So I'm just going to stay stitch within the seam allowance, just less than 3 8 with a regular stitch length. Okay, here we have the front piece extended, right side of the fabric facing up. This is my left hand, this is my right hand, but when this is actually worn on the body, this is the right wearer side, although you see it left on the screen right there. These are the two pieces that we cut with the fabric right sides up, there's one of each. This longer one that has a triangle on the bottom is labeled right side placket, but when you place it here, it will be on your left hand. Don't get confused because this is actually going to be worn on the right side of the body. And then we have a shorter placket and this is going to be placed here where your right hand is. Remember, I'm filming right above. This is the same way you would be working so you can see exactly what I'm doing. For both of these, you have these little slanted areas that have been true to the neckline and that will align right there. You can see it matches perfectly the shape of the neckline right there. And then you have a notch right there that will match the one on the neckline right there. So we are going to just pin these together along the center opening that we have right there. And then this notch will match right where that cut line is right there. Match these up and pin them. It's not a straight seam, it is slightly curved. Okay, so I've pinned this side and now I'm going to pin this other side. This one will also match at the top, it's true to the shape. That notch there will match the one on the back and this will get sewn up to the bottom right there. This one's longer and it's going to cover that later. Then we are going to sew these together and the seam allowance here is 3 8 of an inch for the whole pattern including all this placket area. Remember the right placket has a triangle shape and it has a notch that matches that cut line there. When we sew, we are going to stop sewing about 3 8 of an inch below that. So I'm going to just make a dot right there so I can remember to stop at around that height. And same as on this side, I'm actually going to start from the top and finish there and then I'm going to start here again and then go up. 
So this one as well, you can see the cut line is there. This one doesn't have a notch there, but I'm also going to mark about 3 8 of an inch below that there. This does look all wavy like that and it's supposed to because this is not straight. This is curving out and these pieces are curved, you know, so it'll be fine later on because we are going to be snipping and trimming and all that. But for now it does look sort of strange. So I'm going to start there, go down, stop and reinforce, and then start there, reinforce, and go up like that. I'm going to do it in one go. 3 8 seam allowance. Here's a red dot that shows me where I'm going to stop 3 8 of an inch below that notch there. There, you can see I stopped below the notch, 3 8 Now I'm going to flip this this way, start right there and sew up. Okay, so we have both placket pieces sewn on. Now I'm going to flip this so we can see it from the wrong side. You can see I had stabilized all this area with interfacing because my fabric is very light. So from that corner, I'm going to snip into that corner right there where I've sewn. Right there and the same on this side. Right there. Don't worry about those snips too much because they all will be hidden. <laughs> I'm also going to snip along these seams because they were slightly curved and a few snips will make them conform better. Now back to looking at this from the wrong side of the fabric. I'm going to go to the iron and press these seams in towards the placket. Press them really well. Remember we've snipped at the corners here so you can actually bring them out of there. So you can press it really well even at the bottom. So both of these press the seam towards the placket. When it's pressed, I'll be back. Okay, here we can see what I've just done. I'm looking at it from the wrong side of the fabric. You can see the plackets are extended and the seams pressed towards the placket on both of them. This was snipped down there, so you can move these to the front or to the back. You can do whatever you want with them <laughs> right now. But that is what we need to do. Now, when we flip this over to the right side, it's looking like it's going to make sense a little bit more. <laughs> we have this right side of the placket which is longer, that has the triangle bit coming this way and the left one will be behind it. Here are the two placket pieces that we had prepared earlier that we had folded in the edges. So this is how they have to look. On the top you have that slanted edge. On the bottom it will be flat. This is how you need to hold them. The folded edge will be on the outside and now we are going to align these on top of these placket pieces. So this slanted edge has been true to the shape of the placket right here as you can see. So align this on the top, pin it there, right sides together. You'll see a notch right there on this placket piece that will match the notch on the placket piece that's underneath. And then you will align this all the way down. This piece that we are pinning onto the right placket is shorter. You can see that triangle part protruding and that's fine. It's supposed to be like that, so it's less bulky. So just go ahead and pin that there. And we take the other placket piece and pin it to the left side, the one that's smaller, that's hiding behind the other one. We'll also align these here, right sides together. And we will be sewing these two with 3 8 seam allowance. You can see the notch there matches the notch right there. And these have the same shape because they are the same pattern piece so the bottom will actually reach the same. Okay so we basically have the placket facing pieces pinned onto the main plackets. These will be on the inside. We have them pinned right there and pinned right there. So I'm going to sew this one first and then I'm going to sew that one both with 3 8 seam allowance. Okay, we have these two seams sewn. I want to trim the seam allowance so I think this is too much. So not from the very bottom here but just from where this starts I'm just gonna just reduce it a little bit just to reduce the bulk a little right here. This is a curved placket and I don't want that bulk in there and I'm also going to snip in here a little bit just a few and the same with this one inside. This one I can trim all the way to the bottom. OK, 
Okay, now we want to understitch because we want to keep this facing inside. This is the side of the placket that's going to be in there and we definitely don't want any of that poking. <laughs> so basically when you extend this, the seam allowance will be towards the one that has the folded edge. You can see the seam allowance is this way towards the folded edge and we are going to sew on the edge right there. So I'm going to sew this way. What I'm going to do is have this placket piece on the left the seam allowance is pointing to the left and I'll be sewing right there. So I have this presser foot and I've moved my needle to the left. Remember the seam allowance is this way to the left. So that has been understitched when this placket is folded to the inside. It won't be seen on the outside. And this folded edge that has already been prepared is going to make top stitching this down easy because that's already been done. The folded edge will meet that seam right there. And I'll have a little bit of interfacing protruding but I don't mind that because it really helped me stabilize the neckline. I'm going to understitch this one, the left placket, which is the short one that has the pieces that are the same. So I'm just going to open this. I'm going to start from the top. So I have my main piece there, placket piece has been folded already on the left. Seam allowance is pointing to the left. And when I'm almost at the bottom, I'm not going to understitch to the very bottom. I'm going to stop about a quarter of an inch away from that. And I'll let you know why when I get there. But that's something I discovered from sewing my practice placket. So I'm not going to understitch all the way to the end. It will be about a quarter of an inch away. Okay, here we have our plackets with our placket facing sewn on. It's still extended. We need to fold this back. I'm going to go to the iron and just needle this up. Press it really well. Same as this one here. Press it to the inside, make it really neat. The right placket is covering the left, as you can see. Now, there is a little area that we need to press also down here in this triangle. You can see that on this edge it's already been pressed and here as well. We need to finish pressing this little bit right there. And I'm not going to trust my iron, especially because this fabric doesn't really press that well. I'm going to hand baste this fold of the triangle because it's the only way I think I can get a nice result there to fold it in by 3 8 and then fold it in again and make it look nice. Okay, so I've done it by hand. I folded it on one of these angles and then folded it again. And now from this side, you're going to see a really nice triangle that I'll be happy to top stitch on. But now I'm gonna go and press all this, the rest of the placket. Okay, so this has been pressed really nicely. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like here. Remember we had snipped into there? So what we have here is that snip and that shape there. This has to be in the front of this left placket. So we have the snip and the left placket is behind that, like that. That's how that's supposed to go. Just leave that there. And then this right placket with the triangle is going to cover that and it'll be neat. When we look at the wrong side, we have this edge of this short placket and it's just raw there. Remember I had understitched just up to there not all the way down. I'd left like a quarter of an inch. I want to fold this up by a tiny bit, fold it onto itself like that. So it is a little fiddly. I have managed to fold it inside so that the two edges aren't raw anymore. They're folded inside by a tiny bit. If I'd understitched all the way to the bottom, that would have got it in the way and it would be super bulky there. And so what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to invisibly hand sew it right there. Just slip stitch that closed and it's not going to be too hard it won't take that much of an effort okay and now i'm happy to have this edge be closed like this and safe <laughs> okay now that that's done we can top stitch this now i'm going to top stitch this one first the one that i just finished this remember we have that little flap there that we'd cut this is in front of it so just align it, let the fabric lie like it wants to so it's nice and, and flat there. You can see the flap centered right over this placket piece right there. So I'm just going to put a pin to hold that right there. And I'm going to use the same presser foot I was using to edge stitch and just sew on the edge right there. This is going to catch this hopefully, that's all loose here on the back as you can see. 
I am really really hoping it does catch it and I'll put a few pins here. This fabric although it is a crepe and everything and flimsy because it's all been interfaced as I touch it here it's quite sturdy, it's quite stiff, um, it's not sliding or moving anywhere. Although this edge is, not this because it's interfaced. So I think I can get away with not hand basting this and just sewing it there. So you can use your regular presser foot and just sew on the edge or use this type of presser foot that I think helps. And I'm just really hoping it'll catch everything at the back. And the moment of truth to see if that edge stitch was caught on the other side. And it was, yay! There's nothing that wasn't caught there, so that's good. Okay, now that that short left placket has been top stitched right there, now we can align this one and again just let the fabric fall like it wants to. Remember this was curved so you are going to have this opening like that. It's not straight. So just let it fall like it wants to. I'm going to remove these pins that I had under there and put them on here. And pin here going up like this. Now what I'm going to do, you can see this curves out a little bit like that. Just where this edge of this placket meets the edge of the one that's underneath, that's where I'm going to start sewing, on the edge, right there. And I'm going to sew on the edge there, pivot, 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 and then keep going all the way up. Using the same type of presser foot I was using for edge stitching, it's going to help. And once I've done that seam with that shape, then I'm going to go ahead and do one straight across. I'm not going to go ahead and do another one here and another one there and another one there. I just think it's too much. You don't need it. Personal preference, I have a print, you won't see it. So I think just one seam going across afterwards is going to be enough to hold all this down. So right there where I have that horizontal pin, that's where I'm going to start sewing. And I don't want to back stitch there, I'm just going to let the needle fall and start sewing. And I'll pull that thread to the back and do a little knot so I don't have any back and forth around this area. Now when you go up here, you are going to catch part of the placket that's there, just in the corner. Don't worry, it's just a little bit of bulk there, it's fine. Look how pretty the placket is. Now I'm going to pull these basting stitches that I had done by hand to make this triangle pretty. I have this loose thread that is from when I just started to sew this. I'm just going to take a needle and push it to the back. And here is the back thread that I had there. I'm just going to do a little knot. I think it's really pretty. It starts from there. This is all caught in there. This one that goes over the top covered all that flap area. The snipped area that's nowhere to be seen, it's all underneath. And on the other side, you can see that this is slightly angled. And this was caught there when we were sewing, it's just the shape of the placket. And you can see that this bottom edge is nice and clean, it's all neat, nothing's going to unravel right there. And then you can see that top stitching there. So now, I'm just going to do one more step, which is to do one horizontal step stitch right there across. I've drawn a line with chalk that I'm going to sew across. Look, you can go ahead and do another one right there and then do this and do that, but I just think it's too much. It's not necessary. You can do it if you want to, but I'm just going to do one across. I also won't be back stitching right there. I'll just start and stop and thread at the back so it's nice and neat. And that's it, the placket is done. I think it's way easier than other plackets I have done in the past. So much easier than what I thought it was going to be. A little extra step with the hand sewing at the back. So I'm just pulling these threads back. I like the curved shape of this placket and the fact that it doesn't have buttonholes or buttons. I think it's nice. And it's not too deep that it's going to show cleavage or anything like that. Okay, so it's neat on the inside, neat on the outside and voila. nice my muslin first this one was always intended to be sleeveless although it's not an official view of the pattern you know I'm quite happy to just tweak that armhole to get a little bit more cover you know all I did was take it in 
and the heat by three eighths just to close it in a little bit and that's all I really needed to do there was no special gaping here or anything like that the fit was really good so this is my lovely print I love it so much it's so happy and the fabric feels so soft and airy on the skin I only had a little bit so you can see that my yoke there on the inside has another fabric and I'm always 100% happy to do that if I can get my main pieces to fit from the print. So I have my yoke that's on the outside from the same print and that black in there, <laughs> sneaky way to save on fabric. I made my own bias tape. The way I do this is just easier. I make my bias tape and I wrap it around the raw edge, hand baste it and then just sew on the edge all in one go. Instead of sewing the binding on one side, flipping it, sewing it again, I think that's a little bit more work. So I like doing that little shortcut and it always works for me. Both these pieces are interfaced. So the inner and the outer are interfaced very neatly. It fits perfectly on the neckline. Everything works really well with the block fusing. And here's this placket. It's curved, it's not straight, so it doesn't reach the center front. When you wear it, it looks like a V, like this. And you don't need to do any buttons or button holes. It's not part of the pattern and you don't need them. This is not going to open up and show cleavage. It's just at the right height. Very nice. <laughs> and there is a little bust out there that fits me perfect after the adjustment. And I did take it in at the waist by 3 eighths of an inch, you know, after the fact when I'm trying on my garment. So from here, I took it in by 3 eighths and then just tapered back out to the hips. And I have a little box pleat at the back right there. And the hem on this version, view B, is a little more curved than the hem on the longer view, which is a tunic. It's a little bit more straight. So I love this. It's so summery. Such a happy print. You know the types that just, I just see a print like this and it just makes me instantly happier than I was before looking at it. That's what fabric does to me. Maybe fabric does that to you too. Or maybe I'm just the only one. <laughs> But let's see this on. I have a sort of a dark teal linen skirt and yellow shoes that I paired it with. A very colorful outfit for you to see. This is my first perfect tunic, but this is view B, so it's shorter. It's actually a perfect top. And I made it as a muslin. It was never intended to have sleeves. I had a very small amount of fabric, but it has all the features like the yoke and the placket, all those things. I like this length, it's perfect, I didn't make any adjustments to that and I like that curved hem. Very nice amount of ease at the hips to not be boxy. Up higher you can see this collar, it's so nice, it doesn't reach the center front and the placket is curved, it's not deep so you won't be showing cleavage and you don't need buttonholes or buttons. At the back there's a little yoke with a center back pleat and these are features of UB. View 8 does not have these features. I always like a back yoke with a pleat. Here is a closer look at this placket. So fun to sew, so different from any other plackets I'd sewn. I finished my sleeveless armholes with bias tape I made myself and I like that finish, it's super neat and I made the binding exposed. In general, very happy with this, it's such a happy top. I find that this print looks like a painting from far away. It's so floaty, so flowy and the details of this pattern are amazing and a really enjoyable sew. the one that you saw me sewing look at this amazing print it's so pretty it's got purple which I love and I'm snatching up anything purple that I see in the shops some pink some black some white so pretty at the back there is the yoke my collar my box pleat and maybe you'll see the texture of this fabric that is not really smooth it, I mean it's sort of wrinkled all the time a little bit wrinkled it's just a really really interesting fabric and I look at it and I'm instantly happy just like I was with the other one I've shown you. So nice. This is the front, the collar. It's so, so nicely sewn. I took my time. It was very enjoyable. And my placket. 
the little V shape right there. I did that on purpose to get the black there so that you could see that instead of just having any other random print on this placket area. Of course, everything's easier to see on a solid. And I've said this in every single video, I just can't get myself to sew solids. It's just really, really hard to get inspired by them. Although I know they're necessary and nice, you know, I just, I'm drawn to these prints, you know. So there's my curved placket and it's beautiful. It's very nice structured pieces of it that are interfaced so it holds up really, really nicely. It's not going to flop over and it's really neat on the inside as well. And this is also very fun to do. This is a type of sleeve that has a slit with a binding. And I didn't show you how to do this today, but I already have a video on the channel on how to do this with another pattern. You know, if you see it done on one pattern, it'll be pretty much the same on any pattern. It, the, the technique doesn't really change at all from pattern to pattern for this technique. And it's always so nice and so delicate. There's also a pleat there. It's just so, so nice, so delicate. I love cuffs like this and I like them. Like I won't try to avoid them just because there's a version that doesn't have one. I'll pretty much always make this there because I just think it's so pretty. Yeah, if you've never sewn this, please do. <laughs> I will link you down in the description box helpful videos that can help you put together your garments, like doing the slit, like sewing the yoke with a burrito method. I have so many videos on the channel that show you these techniques. This is my second perfect tunic. This is UB also. It is actually a top. I like the original length. And this one does have the long sleeves with the cuff and more details that you'll see up closer. So nice, the feet is the same as the muslin. Always enjoy the ease there, it's not a boxy top, it's nicely shaped. Curved hems are always nice, and this one doesn't have such a dramatic curve that makes it hard to hem. Up closer is my cuff, all those pieces are interfaced. There is a buttonhole and there is a slit that is finished with binding. Very fun technique, there's also a little pleat in the cuff just a really delicate detail for clothes that we wear. The fit of the sleeves is perfect, so is the shoulders. It's great mobility, you'll be really comfortable with the sleeve. It's not hard to set in. And this one also has a yoke, it's double layered, finished with a burrito roll, super neat inside. And of course the star of the perfect tunic is this beautiful placket and collar. So nice, <laughs> I can't stop saying that, I really enjoyed sewing it and it's just really nice to have garments with details like this it's just something special that you don't sew every day and it's a new skill that you can practice and learn and enjoy it's all interface there so it's nice and structured nothing's going to be flopping around so comfortable i highly recommend and it's another thumbs up from me <laughs> projects that just make me extra happy I feel extra good about my sewing and I'd love to hear what you think do you have projects like these that you've had great success with that make you really happy I'd love to know it's always nice to sew something fast something easy but as I always say these are the garments um, that help us grow in our sewing that help us learn new techniques that help us slow down be accurate take our time I really enjoy it. Don't forget to use the code PERFECT10 if you want to get yourself the pattern for the perfect tunic when you're checking out and you'll get that little discount. Very grateful for Christina for giving me that code so that you can get the pattern for a little bit less if you want to try it yourself. That's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you again very soon with more sewing. Bye! Can I do